Let's talk a little bit about vaccine profits uh, because it appears that, uh, you know, uh, uh, Pfizer and, um, and BioNTech are going to, and, and Moderna, are going to actually attain substantial, significant, large profits. What's interesting is that Pfizer refused the Trump administration's uh, money last year, and they basically said part of the strings attached with the money was that if you get the money from, uh, from the government, then um, when you sell the vaccine, uh, you sell it at, at break even, right? So the government's going to give you the money up front. You're taking a risk. Um, and uh, I can't remember how long, for how long you're not supposed to make a profit. But for a while, you're supposed to not make any money on the vaccine. And that was, um, that was supposed to be uh, part of the, um, you know, part of the requirements, part of the conditions under which you got the billions of dollars that the Trump administration was handing out to everybody. Pfizer, uh, Moderna took a little bit. It, it, it took a little bit, but it, it, it didn't take the full amount, and it refused to uh, commit to not to selling this at, at basically a nonprofit rates. Ian Milkat says, if you don't support the show, the left wins. Yeah, I mean, they might win even if you do support the show, but they certainly will win if you don't support the show. Uh, thank you, Ian Milkat. Um, so uh, Moderna said, okay, we'll take some money, right? But we're not going to take all of it because we want to make a profit of this. If we produce a good drug, if it's successful, we want to be able to make a profit. Pfizer, on the other hand, said, we don't want your money. Don't give us your money. If you want to pay for doses, that's fine. But we're not going to take your money. And we are going to, we only want to get paid if the vaccine is successful. We only want to get paid when you buy the vaccine from us and we want to make a profit. And that's exactly what happened. So Pfizer didn't take money from, uh, I forget the name of the, uh, of the program that the Trump, 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 Trump administration put in place, um, and they are making huge profits, right? Um, Pfizer's told shareholders that it anticipates receiving about $33.5 billion in revenue this year from its COVID-19 vaccine. Um, on a pre-tax adjusted profit margin is supposed to be in the high 20s. That would give them uh, somewhere between seven to $10 billion of profit, seven to $10 billion of profit. That is a, it's pretty good profits. That doesn't include boosters. Uh, boosters could bring in about 26 billion more for both Pfizer, BioNTech, who split the proceeds. Uh, if they're approved for all Americans. Uh, this translates to about $9 billion in Pfizer profits and maybe as much as $20 billion next year in profits uh, and uh, just probably $7 billion in profits just from the boosters. And, you know, and, and, and these are speculatory numbers. They could be much larger. BioNTech, the uh, small startup in um, Germany, started by the children of Turkish immigrants in Germany that really did the science behind the Pfizer vaccine. Uh, they are reporting $3.9 billion euros of profits for the first half, just the first half of 2021. I mean, that is, that is huge for a small company like that and, and massive. And they expect much higher sales next year and therefore much larger profits. So that's about four and a half billion dollars of profits of BioNTech, which just think about a small company, what, what that means for them or what that means to the founders of that company. I mean, they must be among, uh, are now probably among the richest people in Germany, uh, partially because they sold their previous company. This is the second company they've started. This is a husband and wife couple. They sold their previous company for several, uh, for, for I think $1.5 billion before. So they were already wealthy before this even started. Um, and, uh, you know, so it's, it's, it truly is amazing. Uh, so not only are we going to see 
Pfizer, BioNTech, Moderna have unbelievable profits this year, next year. But really, while the profits will decline in years after that, because, you know, it'd be based, to a large extent, it'd be booster shots. Also, remember that both Pfizer and Moderna are providing millions and millions and millions, tens of millions, actually, of doses uh, to countries um, to countries outside of the United States, uh, developing countries, poor countries, for free. So, uh, you know, they are... Um, they're being very generous, if you will, with their philanthropy, right? But in spite of that, we're going to have, um, you know, $2 billion or more profits, maybe more than that, uh, well into the future. Because COVID is going to be with us well into the future. Now, this has, of course, caused the left to go basically apoplectic. And not just the left. You're seeing it on the left and on the right. Why are these companies making so much money? This is the problem. I mean, you saw this from, uh, you know, the, the Trumpist right and the, the left, the populist left and right are just freaking out. And of course, the socialists are freaking out about what the hell these companies are making a fortune. Uh, didn't the science come from state-funded research and therefore the state should own it all or or uh, uh, didn't, uh, didn't Operation Warp Speed pay them? No, it turns out in Pfizer, I didn't get the money. Um, it didn't get the money from uh, Warp Speed. They refused the subsidy, as hard it is to believe uh, for those of you who are anti-big uh, pharma. And so wh what's going to happen? Uh, what's going to happen, uh, you know, to these uh, profits? What, what, what's going to happen to these uh, profits? Where, where does the money flow, right? Where does the money flow? Well, let's take BioNTech. Now, BioNTech is this innovative, small, mRNA-focused startup. Uh, they're in Germany. They've been in the space uh, for, for many years. They've tried using mRNA for cancer, they're, just like uh, Moderna did. They've had some, uh, quite a few failures. Of course, that's in each of startups. Um, what are they doing? Well, they've already, uh, they already today have a cash position of $900 million. Um, what's it going to do with that $900 million? Well, they've they just put out a press release, I guess, uh, that they plan to plow $950 million to $1.5 billion into research and development in the second half of the year. Research and development into what? You know, what are they, we're going to put the money into, right? So we've got now a billion to one and a half billion dollars. It's a lot of money for a small biotech company. And what are they going to do with that? Well, they're working on 15 candidates for cancer therapies. 15 candidates, candidates for cancer therapies. They're also uh, going to be devoting resources to developing malaria and tuberculosis vaccines. Now, just mal a malaria vaccine, just a malaria vaccine, has the potential of saving a million lives a year. A million lives a year in places like Africa. Now, 15 candidates for cancer therapies. I mean, again, cancer is not just brutal in the number of people it kills, but in the way it kills them, it's slow, painful, horrible death. If you've had somebody die in your family from cancer, you know how awful and horrible and, and disruptive it is. Um, imagine if any one of those 15 candidates actually results in a, uh, in a, ther in a, in a in actually successful. Uh, they were also investing heavily an increasing capacity for the vaccine because there are a lot of people in the world still that have not been vaccinated. They expect that next year they'll be able to produce 4 billion doses a year. They continue uh, to uh, research uh, both uh, Emma, BioNTech and Pfizer working on a vaccine for influenza. Wouldn't it be cool if we actually got a, 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 an effective vaccine for the flu? Indeed, tens, hundreds of thousands of people die of the flu every year. I mean, the, the, the potential 
here is, is just unbelievable. Uh, this is a technology that has just proved itself as efficacious, maybe not as effective as we'd hoped. Maybe we'd hoped that these vaccines would last longer than six months, but they're going to learn. They're going to make them de- better. And now they're taking this technology and applying it to a variety of other diseases. So uh, Moderna, for example, is heavily invested. They've got, uh, uh, not only do they have huge profits, but their stock price has gone up dramatically, which means that they can raise capital at very low cost. And they are working on vaccines for, the, uh, on, 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 sorry, drugs, mRNA-based drugs, to treat heart disease, cancer, rare genetic conditions, emerging viruses like Zika, and hard to get, hard to target pathogens like HIV. Now, I mean, how could anybody, how could anybody be upset that these companies are making money when they're, you know, we'll talk about where they should be making money to begin with, but when, you know, even on the basis of kind of a, a you know, this, they could be helping the world and, I mean, what could be a better use of this money? From the perspective of our health in the future, I mean, think about COVID and think about the fact that we, they, these companies developed a vaccine within a year. They developed it because they had invested in platforms, vaccine-producing platforms that never existed in the past. Well, now they've proven the platform can work I mean, the sky's the limit in terms of what can happen. Now, there's a second benefit. This is all economic benefits. We'll get to the, uh, we'll get to the, uh, to the moral case in a minute. There's a second benefit from these profits. I mean, here we have Moderna and Pfizer and, uh, and uh, BioNTech making billions and billions of dollars of profit. Other companies are sitting on the sideline looking at this and going, whoa. There's a lot of money to be made in vaccines. Maybe we should get into the business. This is how markets work. There are companies all over the world now building vaccine platforms. Maybe not for COVID because maybe that market is saturated. Probably not. There's still billions of people still to be vaccinated. And as we said, COVID's going to be for a while, around for a while. Imagine if you could build a vaccine that lasted for 24 months or, 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 or just gave you immunity forever. The people working on that, the market is huge. Profitability is out there, it's been proven. So companies are looking, are searching and investing. Right now, uh, the amount of money generated from the vaccines is higher than any other drug being sold right now in the in 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 the world now it's not that somebody's going to try to copy Pfizer's vaccine they can't it's it, it's it's patented but there but look at how many companies today have vaccines without violating that patent lots of companies are going to enter with their own technologies and their own efforts to try to create better vaccines innovation is not solely driven by the profit motive but certainly the profit motive provides some, some uh, spurring on for innovators. So that's the whole point of the patent system, is to provide innovators an opportunity to make a lot of money and therefore provides the incentive for capital providers to provide capital for innovators to produce a product and protect their property rights and innovate and grow. So we have here companies that are making a lot of money, plowing that money into all kinds of research that is going to improve our health and improve our ability to uh, combat um, diseases and a variety of different diseases, anywhere from cancer, heart disease to Zika and malaria. Malaria would be unbelievable if they could do that. (laughs) And it's amazing. I'm doing a show on vaccine profits. Um, 
And I've already got five thumbs down, right? Because God forbid, in the world in which we live today, even among people who listen to you on book show, um, defending vaccine profits is considered a, uh, a uh, you know, something bad, right? Because God, if only we all took ivermectin, there would be no need for the, co- for the vaccines. God. Thank you for listening or watching the Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to iranbrookshow.com slash support. Or go to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one, of those, uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Iran Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content, and of course, subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are already subscribers and those of you who are already supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.